welcome everyone to a roundtable discussion that Holly organized for us. He is our new editor, discussion editor, strictly speaking, and I brought him on board to kind of be in charge of what I loosely termed a diversity initiative, where we want to give more voice to minority scholars and minority related scholarship. And this is our first kind of venture into this. Um, and without further ado, since this is Holly's show, I will hand it over to him and let him really get into the nuts and bolts of it. Oh, the Holly show, that's a, that's a nice way to start. Um, honestly, first, I just wanted to thank each of you. This is uh, something I've been looking forward to for quite a while. So I'm just gonna do some introductions in no particular order and just jump right into the questions because that's what we're here for. Uh, so up first, we have Hillary N. Green. She's the Associate Professor of Gender and Race Studies Department at the University of Alabama. This academic year, she is currently the Van Professor of Ethics and Society at Davidson College. She's the author of Educational Reconstruction, African-American Schools in the Urban South, 1865 through 1890, which came out with Fordham University Press in 2016. She is currently working on a second book with the title Influx uh, that focuses on how African-Americans remembered and commemorated the American Civil War and its legacy. And I'll be honest, I'm really looking forward to that project. It's, it's gonna be a big deal, I believe. Uh, in addition to her excellent scholarship, uh, she has developed a public history at the University of Alabama, which is called the Hallowed Grounds Project. And I will just say, having worked there and my students engaging with it, it is extremely phenomenal. And post-COVID, it is something we should all check out. <clears throat> Up next, we have Amy Morell Taylor, who is the T. Marshall Hahn Jr. Professor of History at the University of Kentucky. She is the author of Embattled Freedom, Journeys Through the Civil War's Slave Refugee Camps, which came out with the University of North Carolina Press in 2018, and is phenomenal. Uh, but she has also published The Divided Family in the Civil War, in Civil War America, which also came out with UNC Press in 2005, which is also a great book. She is uh, also the co-editor uh, co for the Uncivil War series in the University of Georgia Press, which uh, is also, little spoiler alert, is going to be publishing The Family Civil War next year, which is my forthcoming project, uh, which I am excited to be hopefully seeing what people's reactions is. And also, uh, we have Professor Kelly Mezarek, who is a historian who focuses on Black men who served in United States Colored Troops, or USCT, and the Union Navy, both during the American Civil War and their lives as veterans <clears throat> into the late 19th century. She is the author of For Their Own Cause, the 27th United States Colored Troops, uh, which came out with uh, Kent State University Press in 2016, and is a phenomenal book. Y'all need to not only read it, cite it, but assign it in your classes. She also has some chapters um, in a various uh, edited volumes. One focuses on Black Union prison guards and crossing the deadlines, the Civil War prisons reconsidered, which is on my bookshelf. And then also an essay on Black veterans in Midwestern uh, soldiers' homes, which is part of the war went on, reconsidering the lives of Civil War veterans. And that is also an excellent essay. Um, and I'll just close with... Uh, Professor Mazurek is, uh, like I said, professor of history, has been teaching in North, the Northeast Ohio for over 20 years and is a member of the Ohio Humanities Speakers Bureau. So basically, I say all that to say that they're big deals. <laughs> now, I was just, for me, this round table is about having some important conversations around black soldiers during the Civil War and after, but also what it even means for the African American communities and their families. So I'm just gonna open up with these, you know, each question and honestly sit back and let y'all, you know, provide the information as you see necessary. So how do you envision your research has shifted the historical conversation to acknowledge familial experiences of African-Americans in the Civil War era? I'm a Civil War historian because of family. It's family porches that I learned about um, African Americans who were um, kidnapped and enslaved during the Civil War. My mother's family dates back to Pennsylvania since um, prior to 1820 as free people of color. They are still in those counties. Um, so I learned through family porches, the families of these small rural communities in Pennsylvania, and then on my father's side of the family, the Southern cause and African American experience. So family 
and family understandings of the Civil War permeated my own childhood and growing up and why I studied the Civil War and why I focused on communities and families and how they understood the war and its legacy. So it's that personal take on the Civil War and one that's not fully recognized because they are rural farming Black communities or rural right. Southern communities that they don't leave records. It's all oral tradition. Mm -hmm. So how do we bring in the porches, those informal texts, how do we read that? But I recognize that scholarship as legitimate. I recognize mm -hmm. those archives as the basis for newer questions on old topics. But the African American experience and the family experience by choice and by blood formulates my entire research. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll jump in next. Um, and you've already raised some really interesting questions about sources and research that I hope we can dig into yes, a little yes. bit more. But I guess first, thank you, Holly, for having me on this conversation. I'm really honored to be here today. And, um, you know, you asked about how our research has sort of shifted the conversation and a little hard for me to gauge that myself. But I will say that from the outset, I've I've been studying family history, whether it's African-American families or white families since I first became a historian. And it's always been very important to me to take family seriously and not simply see it as like interesting human detail. That's like the backdrop to the bigger story. Um, in my latest book, just as an example, you know, I study the um, enslaved people who flee slavery during the war and head behind Union Army lines. And, you know, you can't understand the choices they make about where to go and when without thinking about their families, because their considerations about reuniting with family or keeping family together or keeping them safe was really integral to the choices that they made when they flee, uh, fled, excuse me. And, um, and also, I mean, as other historians have shown, you know, family was foundational to the way many enslaved people were defining freedom. Right. You know, the ability to move around, find long separated family, um, to keep a family intact, to, if they wanted to receive legal recognition of family. I mean, all of this is a, a, a part of the whole definition of freedom and the way it was long imagined. So um, I guess to sum up, I just don't think you can ignore it. It, it family right. penetrates everything. It penetrates the politics, the economy, everything, the military history of this war. Um, and, and we really have to take it seriously. So I come at this through at least initially a regimental history. Mm. And I, I hope uh, that I add to a growing number of other scholars working on civil war regimental histories that are getting beyond the battlefield, moving beyond campaigns and battles. I, I don't do those myself. Uh, my interest has always been the individuals who made up these regiments, particularly um, African American men in, in the North. And now my work has expanded and I'm looking at it in a larger um, national sense, but, but still, the, the idea of the, the regiment as a, a unit to kind of deep dive into these relationships, whether it be the North, like I worked on, or other er uh, geographic areas, whether the former, formerly enslaved or free people uh, of color are joining, the family is just pivotal to the decisions that they make or how they react to decisions that were out of their hands. So this idea of looking at it through the lens of uh, as a social study, right, uh, and as, as how these men as soldiers or sailors are connected to the home front has often been left out of stories of the United States colored troops and Black Navy, right. those men in the Black Navy. And um, unfortunately, it's often been left out because the argument is, is that they did not have the same kind of contact. Um, and it's simply not accurate for most of, of these individuals. And so the, the family is, is why they joined at the heart of it. We can talk about that more later. 
uh, and much like Hillary was talking about, uh, you, you, in doing the regimental history, by going through the soldiers and their experiences, we can see a lot of the diversity that's also left out of the studies on African American families during this time period. And it is a diverse range of experiences. So I use the regiment kind of as my um, area of study, but I'm, I'm interested in the relationships of those men and their families and their communities. I mean, honestly, listening to all three of you talk uh, reaffirms why I do what I do. Um, each In each way, honestly, every one of you with what you just said is pivotal to not just my book, but everything I've published to date and plan to anyway. Uh, and I say that because of my personal connection to military service through my mother. Um, you know, first she served in, you know, the modern United States Navy, but still it was what does her service mean to me as her child? What does it mean to my mother, to the community? Um, you know, she's seen as a veteran and a hero, right? But she's my mom, she's someone's sister. And understanding those multiple layers, that's how we better understand what service is because uh, I struggled as a child with that. And, and honestly, doing Civil War history, using in many cases, my project was a regimental history that then became focused on a specific subset of people from Philadelphia to really look at the families and to, and to center it on conversations of service as it relates to a family structure, the tensions, the joys, the, the, meet, the battle of you know, memory, right? So in many ways, everything you all have said reaffirms the value of what I'm doing. So thank you <laughs> on a personal level. Um, but I think this is really important. I think also, you know, as you've all have said, when I've read every one of your works, I think of Tara Hunter, I think of Norley Frankel, you know, I think of Brandy Brimmer's new excellent book. I think of Shandra Manning and, and Donald Schaefer and Elizabeth Rogozin. Like there has been this long history of, of, you know, going back to at least the late 90s of centering conversations on the Civil War as it relates to families. 